When I first opened Augmented Strings Intro from Arturia, I used this preset, Beautiful Swell. And then I thought to myself, what does this big morph knob do? And that's when it happened. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. So when I adjusted that big morph knob, I found out what this plugin is really all about. And you're gonna find out what it's all about in this video. But first of all, I must let you know that this plugin is completely free until April the 30th. Now this is to celebrate the launch of Arturia's new augmented series. But I do urge you to watch this whole video before you go ahead and download it, because I'm gonna give you a mini tutorial, which is really gonna help you to get the best out of this plugin. So watch the video and then follow the link in the description down below. Now, back to that big knob. So let's find out what that big morph button does. I'm going to play those strings again, but I'm gradually going to turn it up. So what you're hearing there is at the heart of what the augmented series is about, using acoustic instrument sounds and fusing them with synthesis and expression controls. This incredibly free plugin has a much wider range of sounds than this. So let's take a look at some more of the presets. So the presets kind of come in three different groups. If we go up to the menu up here, you can see there's the acoustic sounds, the hybrid sounds, so they're a mixture between the acoustic and the synth, and then the synth sound. So it's, it's more of a matter of emphasis than anything else, but you can adjust them all, of course, yourself. We'll talk about that later. But let's just go through a couple of acoustic ones now. I'm going to go over to this one, Deepening, okay? Let's have a listen to that. So you can hear that's a kind of an acoustic bass sound. There is a little bit of synthesis in there, actually. Uh, the morph button's just up a little bit there. If we turn that all the way down, and I'll tell you what, I'm going to get rid of some of that delay and that reverb there. Have a listen now. You get much more sort of like acoustic bass sound there. If that's what you want, that's great. Of course, you can mess around with it. Let's have a listen to another acoustic one. I'm going to go to... Oh, I tried this one earlier, uh, Spiccato Cloud. This one's really a little bit odd. It's definitely acoustic sounding, but there's definitely something else going on. Have a listen. <laughs> there's these kind of random delays going on or something like that. I don't know. Bit of fun there. You may be able to make use of something like that. Let's go through to some hybrid sounds. I'm going to go kind of random here, to be honest with you, because I don't know any of these. Uh, orange. Let's try that one out. Ooh. I could use that orange now that sounds very sort of synthy to me it's a hybrid sound so let's just try something else um, we'll go harp mutation then very nice indeed Okay, let's go then to some synth sounds. Obviously, these ones are designed to, you know, be very synthy, not very acoustically acoustic-y. Is that a word? Acoustic-y sounding. Uh, dancing bows. Let's try that one. Okay. Well, we've kind of had a few sounds a little bit like that, so let's just try something different. Uh, oh, soul pad. That sounds like me. I love my pads. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. You can hear that there's a really big range of sounds in this 
free, did I mention it's free? This free plugin. Um, and if I just go up here to all presets, you can only see some of them because lots of them go off the screen. I don't know how many there is, probably like, I don't know, 40, something like that. All really kind of useful and inspiring sounds. I found that when I was playing around the presets earlier, that it made me want to create music. That's a very good thing. Now, you're probably going to want to make these sounds your own a little bit, so you're going to need to know what these knobs do. Let's take a look at that next. Okay, so full disclosure, at the time of making this video, I'm actually using the pre-release version of this plugin, and as such, I don't have access to the documentation. So I've kind of had to guess at what some of these controls do. Now, I don't mind admitting to you, I became a little confused along the way, and we'll find out why in a moment. Let's start off by looking at the two most obvious controls on the interface, I guess, the delay and reverb controls. These knobs just blend in more or less of those effects to the overall sound. Now, this is where I started to have a little bit of confusion because I noticed this. For example, I'm on this preset, Pop Staccato, okay? I'm just going to play a note without having any delay on at all, just like so. Okay, so that's the sound. Now I'll turn delay up full. And you can hear what perhaps five or six repeats there which gradually fade out okay so now i'm going to change to another preset which i'm going to go to that deepening one we used earlier i'll do the same again here it is without any delay now i'll turn delay up full there's probably only two delays there and they're spaced much further apart, okay? So what I learned from this, and this applies to some of these other controls, if not all of them, that the actual underlying sort of fancy stuff which is happening, the more advanced stuff, is different depending on which preset you're using, okay? You just have a sort of a more of a macro control about blending those things in. As I say, who knows, with the full versions of these, maybe there'll be, you know, advanced controls for these. But this is fine. You can still do an awful lot with this. Now, I will say with the delay, however, that you can change the timing in the sense that it seems to be linked to the tempo of your door, okay? So um, if we listen to uh, this one at the moment, I'm just going to quickly change the tempo in my door. It's at 120 at the moment. I'll change it to, say, 160. We'll play the note again. And you can hear it's a lot faster. So that is kind of, you can get a little control over that at least. So let's move on. I'm going to go back to that pop staccato. And let's look at these top three controls up here, okay? There's a reason why I'm doing it in this way. So we've got color, time, and motion. So let's start off with color. For most presets, or the presets I've tried at least, this seems to be a kind of a filter control. So I'll just play a note now. Yeah, and we'll turn this up. And you can hear it's filtering out those uh, high frequencies there. So that's quite useful, actually, especially if you're sort of moving it while you're playing. You can get some really nice effects like that. Okay, so that's color. Then we have time. Let's uh, play with this a little bit. I'm going to turn it all the way down and play. In fact, I'm going to change to a different preset. Let's go to this deepening pre uh, preset again. I'll just play a note with time all the way down. Yeah. Now you hear that note's got a decent sort of attack on it. When we turn time all the way up, It's got a really slow attack on it. So in the in this case, I thought to myself, oh, time is just attack. But not quite, because if I change to another preset, let's try this orange one, and we'll move time on this one. There's time. We'll turn it up. It's not changing the attack. It seems to be changing the length of the notes kind of thing within those repeats. Not really absolutely sure, but yeah, you can see that it's just behaving a little differently, okay? So again, if, you, if you're a little confused when you're messing around with this, just bear in mind, I think it's just different with different presets, the way it behaves. But it does relate to time in some way, so it's very appropriately labeled. Let's just change again to our pop staccato. And the same for motion. It does appear to change depending on the preset but it, it seems to relate to some kind of modulation. I'll just play these uh, strings again. I'll, uh, a staccato pop strings, I'll just say. Yeah. And then. So there seems to be some sort of 
modulation or the volume there. I felt with some others that I tried that it was just doing some different things. We'll try that. That bass again. You can hear it's not really doing much on the bass there. Other other things, look, I don't quote me on this, but I felt that maybe it was modulating pitch on some of the presets and things. But anyway, motion makes sense, doesn't it? Um, but do bear in mind that they're going to do different things for different presets. I think I've labored that point enough now. Now, finally, the same applies to these two controls, effects A and effects B. They also seem to have different effects applied to them depending on the preset. And it's worth just understanding here that this one, effects A, is applied to your sort of more acoustic side of the equation, okay? Remember this morph control sort of blended more acoustic sounds and then, over, or, you know, with synthesis over on the right-hand side there. So look at this uh, ring which sort of goes around the edge. It's more yellow around this side, and you'll notice that effects A is more yellow, and that's sort of telling you basically that effects A is applied to the more sort of acoustic sounds, and effects B is applied to the sort of synthesis sounds. Okay, so that's all I've managed to understand about these um, different knobs on the interface here. To be honest with you, although they're kind of macro controls, when you use them all together, you can really create your own unique sounds um, with this awesome, did I mention it's free plugin? Now I reckon this plugin would go really well with another couple of free plugins I reviewed recently, those being Foundations Piano and Micah's Choir. Check out my review for those two in this video right here and start making some awesome music for free.